but nobody wanted to do anything. And then I thought, well, okay, uh, you know, I'm gonna have to try to do my best by myself. And I started by polling my mother. Now, <laughs> my, my, I, had to, I scaled down, right? I went back to my mom. So I told my mom, and again, this is again 2007. And I told my mom, I said, mom, you know what? We have oil in the ground in this place. And she was like, oh my God, we're all gonna become very rich. <laughs> and, and she said that just out of, you know, you know uh, um, good faith ignorance. She didn't know any better, okay? So I thought that I had to target that kind of person. I had to talk to the normal person and tell them, no, you are not gonna become rich, they are gonna become rich, and all that's gonna be left to you is the pollution and all the disasters that we've heard about you know, earlier today. So, uh, and again, because I had this contact with locals and because they were telling me that nobody knew anything about what was going on, I decided, you know, they asked me to write some report that was comprehensive, like an easy thing. So I actually did that. And uh, um, uh, we can go ahead. And, uh, uh, and again, when you do these things, you can focus on many angles. And uh, um, I could have talked about climate change and all these big things, but that wasn't going to really you know, come to the heart of, of people. So I decided to focus on health effects. Now, whatever comes out of these, uh, there's many things, as we heard earlier, that come out of these oil and gas uh, uh, you know, operations. One of them is hydrogen sulfide. And actually, the, the, the person before me actually showed a, sh showed a chart with H2S concentrations. And I decided to focus on this because this was going to be a very big problem with the oil in Abruzzo because it had a lot of sulfur in it. And I tried to explain what was going to happen to agriculture, to people's lungs, to the environment because of this hydrogen sulfide. And because I am just a person from the math department, I decided to enroll my friend uh, uh, who is actually in the School of Medicine so that it would look a little bit more uh, uh, you know, important. Um, so again, I wrote this report and I also tried to Right, put many little things in there about you know pollution, air you know air quality, uh, the risk of also earthquakes and you know disasters that had happened in other parts of the world. Okay, so I did all that and it started circulating, and uh, uh, right and again so as I said I tried to write you know all the dangers to health and again that that there was actually not going to be that the promises of new jobs was actually not going to be uh, maintained, and also right I thought that I tried to tell people that look it's totally unacceptable that overseas investors know more about this than you who live there. You should be really upset that they are sort of, right, taking you for a ride. So, um now this gets circulated again, right? And then I also went to look at other parts of Italy where they already were doing oil drilling operations, especially in the south. And right, and I just went to find some papers that they had written about again the effects of this hydrogen sulfide, one of these again pollutants that comes out of these refineries on uh, um, vineyards because that was their main occupation. Okay, and also in other parts of Italy where this was already happening. So I put all of this in my in my report. Um, as well as uh, this was another sci scientific article about, uh, uh, so Basilicata is again, the part of Italy where they already did oil drilling, and actually they found hydrocarbons in honey. So that means that if you find oil components in the honey of bees, it means that these pollutants have found their way through, you know, throughout the entire food chain, right? If it comes to honey, it means that it's all over the place. So, you know, I tried to put that in, and also there was, um, can we go ahead? Yeah. There was uh, also another uh, um, episode. This actually happened in the in the 60s, where they were drilling. This was actually natural gas, and they had all these uh, all the dotted lines. That, all the dots here are um, natural gas wells. This is northern Italy, and all the lines here are actually dead uh, uh, peach trees. So what happened is that because of all this pumping of natural gas, they had the land started sinking, and all the geology got all mixed up. It was polluted. The salinity increased, and basically it dried out all the peach trees that I. Had, that they had in that area. Okay, so I also put this in my report. So this thing starts circulating, and I live in California. They have never seen me before. So, you know, the mayor of the town, which is this guy here, the one that had his own company, and this was his vice, the vice mayor, they started saying things like, well, she must be, she doesn't exist. It's probably somebody that's impersonating her. She must be a, a creature from the web. Uh, but again, people started talking, okay? This created a conversation. And, uh, um, and so finally, the mayor emails me back and he says, you know, because I had emailed him at the beginning and he never responded, but after a few months, he actually did respond. And he told me, right, we should have coffee one day and I'm sure that, you know, I'm gonna explain to you that this has absolutely no problem. It's just, you know, a gas pipeline and we're all gonna be safe. So, and he says, I think you are misinformed. And by then I knew enough about this project that I could answer, I think you are misinformed. Um, so I write this report and uh, 
uh, you know, there's this talk, and I thought that my job was done, right? Because what else can I do? But they asked me, so what are you doing for Christmas? And I said, well, I'm coming to visit my mother. Oh, great. You have to come, and we'll organize a series of you know, talks with the public so you can tell the content of this report to the people, and we can write, inform and you know, educate the regular folks. And so I did it. I didn't know what I was doing because it's actually, I, I had zero experience talking to right, an audience of non-science people. And to me, it's, it's very difficult to talk to, right? Because I'm kind of a shy person of my own. But you know, I did it and we did this all over the place. And uh, um, it became you know, quite successful. And uh, um, I knew that we were doing well because one time my mother told me, you know what, I went to the supermarket and two ladies that I didn't know, they were talking about the oil refinery. And I thought that that was a very, very good you know, indication that when normal people, again, in the supermarket were debating oil stuff, it means that really this message had spread about. So uh, the oil people themselves took, you know, took notice of this. And while I was still there, this was again January of 2008, they invite me to a private meeting. Now, I, I was, again, I was very, very naive at the time. I didn't, I would never go now to a private meeting, but at the time I went, because I, again, I didn't know any better. And they had invited this gentleman here, uh, uh, who was a chemical engineer from the University of Pisa. And uh, uh, he was very, very um, dismissive of me and almost as if I was a little girl. And uh, he says, right, oh, don't worry, hydrogen sulfide is not so terrible. It smells of rotten eggs, but that's just because some people have a more delicate sense of smell. <laughs> and then he says, if we don't drill the place, you are going to be responsible for this place being left in the cold and in the dark. And he says, you're too young to understand how the world really works. Come visit us in Milan and we'll explain to you. So after I left um, that meeting, I was about to come back to the US and I, that really cemented in me the desire that these people should not win because I was really, really disturbed by you know, how they took everything as if it was nothing, right? As if, you know, pollution, it's somebody else. Sickness, it's somebody else. And, you know, it's statistics. And that's not right, because it's not statistics, it's somebody's life, it's somebody's lungs, and it's somebody's children. So I went home and I decided that I had to keep on this, this idea of, as we were saying at home last night, educating the people. It's all about letting people know, you know, the things that we know here. And so I opened the blog, I had petitions, uh, I gave my slides to people over there so that they could keep on doing these town hall meetings even without me. Uh, uh, we did lots of things with Skype and because there, it's a nine hour difference between California and Italy, they would have these uh, Skype phone call things with, the, with you know, uh, people protesting uh, and it was odd times for me. So I would get up really fast and just get ready from here to here <laughs> and then be in my pajamas so that right, we could do this. And you know, we had documentaries made, they were just amateur things things, the winemakers got involved, uh, uh, right? and we did you know, as much as we could with whatever we had at our disposal. And so but again, remember, all the permits had been given out, so there was a sense of urgency. So they decided to have these ra this rally and to ask for a, um, a temporary moratorium. And in fact, this, they had 6,000 people descend in front of the offices of the governor, which for this particular part of the world is actually a big number. And so he signed a moratorium for at least six months. So that everything was put on a, you know emergency hold for six months. And later on, this moratorium was extended for another year until 2009, okay? And again, this governor, as I said before, was later arrested because he had embezzled six million euros. And it was funny because where do you hide six million euros, right? You just can't go to the bank and say, here's six million euros. So he actually hid them in apple bags. So they found apple bags stocked with money. But this was, and again, this is like the cultivatori, this is the agricultural farmers of this particular town that is called Tollo. Uh, and they had you know, all sorts of you know, uh, groups uh, that were trying to uh, protest and ask for this moratorium. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, also these strange monsters started appearing in the ocean in front of us. And you know, people were you know, terrified, and what is this, right? Uh, so this was another thing that also started around that time and that occupied me for a little bit also. Uh, actually, we can go on after this, right? And uh, now at this point, right, when all these people descended and, you know, were asking for a moratorium, etc., the big green groups decided that they couldn't let this go. So the World Wildlife Fund decided to appeal. They did, you know, they, they appealed to the Supreme Court uh, uh, asking them to, you know, withdraw these authorizations. But the court ruled in favor of the oil company saying that economic interests are more important than health concerns. 
So the, that it was really written like that in the statement. So the oil company feels you know empowered, and so they just go ahead you know trying to buy more land for their you know for their project. And again, they use all these scare tactics, telling these people that you know if you don't give us our land, we're going to take it anyway. Uh, uh, you better sell now. That at least you can get a good deal out of it. Uh, you know. You know, just trying to, to you know put pressure on them, calling them at home at all times of the day and of the night, uh, and so you know a lot of people actually sold their land, but two people did not, and one of them is this man over here. His name is Armando Sini. He actually owned again uh, olive trees there, and he refused 200,000 euros uh, uh, to you know he, he gave up on 200,000 euros uh, because he just didn't want the land to be uh, polluted. So that gave us a little bit of hope. Um, and then in the summer of that same year, uh, I go back to it and I keep doing all this, you know, uh, uh, talking to different towns, etc. And at this time, the oil company decides that, okay, we should have a big meeting and, you know, a big debate so that, you know, they thought that they could, you know, just show that they knew better than anybody else. So we have this debate, and the same guy, the, the guy that I told you before, he came again, and he had all his fancy slides and everything. And again, he, he, you know, he, he said all the things that he had told me earlier in the January meeting, and he started by saying that he's not a consultant of the oil companies, but because the oil company is partly owned by the government, he's actually a simple servant of the state. And then again, he repeated the statement that hydrogen sulfide is just a nuisance and it's not really a refinery, it's just a storage center, okay? So he tried to mystify everything, but I had done my homework and I had spent my time, uh, you know, studying everything that he was going to say because we had had that private meeting earlier and uh, we can go ahead. And so, right, I went to find his uh, CV and it showed clearly that he was a member of the Society of Petroleum Engineers. He had his own company that was an oil consulting company. Uh, he had written papers where he was saying that hydrogen sulfide was highly toxic. So you can't tell the audience that this is just a nuisance and then there's a paper with your name where you say that this is highly, uh, a, a major pollutant entering the atmosphere and causing acid rain. You can't write one thing and say one thing to the people. So. Um, uh, and again, and then I also went to find other statements where in fact the oil companies themselves called it a refinery. Okay, so this was a, a, a very bad blow for them um, and my mother was present, Always, my, my, I took my mother with me to all these things and they didn't know that she was my mother. Um, so one of the oil people went, you know, just had some, you know, told her, oh, but that woman is, really knows what she's talking about. And this, so the oil person told my mom without knowing it was my mom, they gave me a compliment. And so that's my daughter, so <laughs> she was very proud. <laughs> But okay, but so this debate was good for public opinion. But again, remember, the, the, we needed to stop this from, uh, you know, with signatures on pen and paper. So as time kept going on, I was still worried about, you know, angry at these bishops because they had not done anything. And, uh, um, and I had kept emailing them over the course of many months saying, you know, please do something and, you know, these are all the scientific facts and blah, blah, blah. Never any response. So one day I was really angry and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to let all my anger come out. And I, if nothing else, I will have uh, had peace of mind that I just, you know, gave them a piece of my, uh, you know, I just, you know, vented out my anger to them. And so I wrote to three bishops of the area and I said, uh, what you're doing is not very Christian. Um, what you're doing is more like Pontius Pilate because you refuse to take positions. Now you have the right to say that you are in favor of the oil drilling, that's perfectly fine, you can have your opinion, but you know, it's important that you say something. And I also want to remind you, dear Mr. Bishop, that the Catholic Church always says that they are pro-life. And life is not just the business of being born and dying, life is everything that's in between. And life is the air that you breathe, life is the water that you drink, life is the hope that you give to your people.